Father. Who is it? It's me, Father, William. Wi oh, William, yes, yes, come, come in, come in, my, come in, my boy, yes, come in, come in, warm yourself by the fire. Oh, do, do sit down and join me, yes, yes. Oh, would you like something to, uh, to drink, uh, uh, sherry, perhaps? I really can't stay long. Oh, oh, that is a, that is a shame. I'm encumbered with work. Always busy this time of year. This time of year? At Christmas? <laughs> Humbug. I know you love the season so, Father, but I have a family to care for. It's a sacrifice to bear for their sake. <laughs> Each Christmas passes, and yet the story remains the same. <laughs> did I... did I ever tell you the story of Ebenezer Scrooge? Possibly, Father, but you tell so many stories. Well, if you cannot permit me the company for the evening, at least humor me for this tale. Very well, but I cannot stay long. Good lad. It was Christmas Eve, not so different from today. The snow was covering the dirt and grit of the London streets. But this Christmas Eve would later become an eventful night for one Ebenezer Scrooge. It's him! Don't look! <gasps> Humbug. Good morning, Mr. Scrooge. Mr. Cratchit, I want the eviction notices ready for distribution tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, sir? But it's Christmas. It means little to me, Mr. Cratchit. Now please get on with your work, man. Of course, Mr. Scrooge. And close the windows. There's been enough noise. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. God save you. Bah! Humbug. Oh, come along, Uncle. Humbug. You don't mean that, surely. I do. Merry Christmas? What right have you to be merry? You're poor enough. And what right do you have to be so miserable? You're rich enough. What else can I be, nephew? When I live in a world such as this? Merry Christmas. <laughs> bah! What's Christmas time for you but a time to pay bills without money? Finding yourself a year older, not a penny richer. If Christmas was my way, every idiot who goes about singing Merry Christmas should be boiled on his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through their heart. Uncle. Nephew, keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Keep it, if that's what you call it. Then let me leave it alone then. Much good it has ever done for you. I mean, look at Mr. Cratchit. Fifteen shillings a week and a wife and a family talking about a merry Christmas. I'd rather retire to Bedlam. What you and I class as good must differ, Uncle. Christmas is a wonderful time, a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable and pleasant time. The only time of year it truly is. And all right, it hasn't put any gold in my pocket. I believe it has done me good and will do me good, and I say, God bless it. Back to your work, Mr. Cratchit. I'm so sorry, Mr. Scrooge. Don't be so angry, Uncle. Come and dine with us tomorrow. With you and your wife? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. More idiotic words than Merry Christmas. Good afternoon, nephew. <clears throat> Uncle, please. I said good afternoon. <sighs> Very well. A Merry Christmas, Uncle. Hmm. Now we can get on with some work that... <sighs> oh, it's freezing out there. Ah, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. 
Um, have I the pleasure of addressing Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Marley has been dead for seven years. He died seven years ago tonight, in fact. Oh, I, um, I'm, I'm so, I'm so sorry to hear that. But I hope you, as the surviving partner, would be able to help. You see, at this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, it is a time of generosity to donate to the poor and destitute who are suffering greatly at this time, many of which have no homes to keep warm from the cold. Are there no prisons? Well, uh, there's plenty of prisons. And you mean workhouses? Yes. Oh. However... I was afraid they'd have nothing. Well, they're all full, Mr. Scrooge, which is why I'm asking for donations. Now, how much can I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to be anonymous? I wish to be left alone. I help to support the establishments I mentioned. They cost enough. They should all go there. But they can't, sir. Many would rather die. If they would rather die, they had better do it and decrease the surplus population. You are despicable, Mr. Scrooge. Good day to you. Good afternoon. Sir, this, this may not be the best time to ask this, but um, ab about tomorrow. Yes, you want all day tomorrow, don't you? If it's convenient, sir. It isn't. You think I must be mad to pay a day's wages for no work? It's just the one day a year, sir. I could be in bright and early for the day after. A poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every 25th of December. <sighs> Very well. <clears throat> but you must be earlier the next morning. Is that understood? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sounds like a charming man. Scrooge was revered, despised, feared by many. His cruelty held no bounds. While as content in his unhappiness, he went to his manor home as the sun set behind the surrounding buildings. Darkness was cheap, and Scrooge liked it. Completely alone. He approached his front door with his key in hand, but stopping as the door knocker glowed and began to change into a face he knew to be long gone. Huh? Jacob Marley? Scrooge! And just like that, the door knocker was a knocker once more. Humbug. I must be tired. Hello? Speak, Don you. Up, Scrooge went, carefully taking each step as it came until he reached the landing. He searched in every room, but all was as it should be. Nobody under the table, nobody under the bed. He was alone. Humbug. Never is Debit a ruder. And close your mouth. You'll let in a draft. It, it's humbug still. I, I won't believe it. Jacob, my friend, you're dead. Yes, well, of course I'm dead. I'm hardly looking my best, am I? And so much can be said for you. Now, come and join me by the fire. I've already helped myself to the wine in the cellar. Marvelous vintage. You don't believe in me, do you? I do not. Why do you doubt your senses? I'm here. I'm talking to you. Because a, a little thing affects them. A slight disorder of the stomach makes them cheat. You may be an undigested bit of beef, a blot of mustard, a crumb of cheese, 
A fragment of an undone potato. Oh, yes. There's more gravy than grave about you. Scrooge! Huh. This is no, no time, time for jokes, jokes, you know. Then why do you come to see me? Because, because I, I hope to ensure you avoid, avoid the same fate as I. Fate? What fate? To wear these confounded chains, of course. We don't, don't think, think this, this is some, some kind of decorative neckwear. Why are you chained up? I forged these chains in life. I girded them of my own free will. And such chains wait for you, keeping you trapped between life and death. Doomed to travel without rest. But you were always a good man of business, Jacob. Business? No, oh, no, no. This is what happened as a result of my business. Now, I'm here to warn you that you still have a chance and hope of avoiding my fate. You'll be visited by three spirits. The first will arrive tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Must I? Can I not see them all at once? Get it over with? Well, that would be frankly convenient, wouldn't it? But no. The second will appear the hour after. The third they are after that. Oh, and Scrooge. Yes, Jacob? Do take, take them seriously, them. won't you? Oh, it's... It's all humbug. It's not real. Mm. The dead stay dead. They do not come back, Father. Well, who knows for certain, hmm? Nevertheless... Marley's return troubled Scrooge as he did not sleep. The condemning warnings from his friend played on his mind. As the night rolled into one, he listened out for the chimes of the church bells. Is it time? Well, where are you? Come out, then. I haven't got all night. Then suddenly the fireplace roared into life, and from within an unearthly visitor appeared. A strange figure of light moved towards the blinded Scrooge. It was like a child, yet not so like a child. Can it be... Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? Bingo! <laughs> That's me. I mean, is it me being here? Would you mind turning the light down with your cap? Oh, I cannot. Oh. For I am here to make thee see upon this very eve. Who and what am I addressing? Are you the future? Oh, no. I ain't your future, mate. That's the other lads. We're experts when it comes to time. Tis I, the ghost of Christmas past. Your past, to be precise. I'm exactly what it says on the tin. Well, your spirits are the label. And what business has brought you here? Your welfare. Fancy a trip down memory lane? Oh, of course you do. It'll do the world of good. Well... Don't just sit there. Rise and walk with me. Where are we going? Out of the window, of course. Do you realise I am not a spirit like yourself? I am mortal and liable to fall. Oh, don't be daft. You got me. You're going to like this bit. The spirit pressed its warm hand against Scrooge's cold heart, and he was raised off the ground. The spirit gently took hold of Scrooge's hand as they soared out of the room into the twilight sky high above the city. Guided by moonlight, the lights of London vanished as they travelled far in more ways than one. To another place... Another Christmas, long ago, on a country road with snow-covered fields. It is daylight, but, but how? Good heavens, 
Am I really back here? You recognize this place. Remember it? Indeed I do. I could walk this place blindfolded. I was bred as a boy here. Everything is exactly as I remember. Even the smell of fresh bread from Mr. Jackson's bakery. Your lip is trembling. And what is that upon your cheek? It is merely the snow in my eye. Nothing more. May I... May I have a look around? Lead the way. This here is my old school. Over there, that's that's Peter. Good old George. I wonder if they will still remember me. It's been a long time. Hello, boys. It is I, Ebenezer. Spirit, can they not see us? These are the shadows of things that have been. They have no consciousness of our presence here. Look through the window. There's something lost and forgotten inside. Do you see? As the children prepare to leave for Christmas, one child remains, neglected by his friends. No child should be alone at Christmas. I became used to my own company, often reading the adventures of Ali Baba. Christmas was always a time that allowed me to get on with more work and studying. Then, you were saved. Someone didn't forget you. Fan. She was the only family I truly had. If it was not for her, I almost certainly would have still been here for many long years. She was always a delicate creature, whom a breath might have withered. But she had a large heart. So she did. I miss her. She died a woman and had children. Just the one. My nephew, Fred. I made a promise to her to watch over him. Is that more snow in your eye, Ebenezer Scrooge? Come along. There's more to see, you know. We have travelled once more. That's the gift of a ghost. Do you know where we are now? These streets are somewhat familiar. <sighs> Listen. Can you hear that inside? <laughs> Good heavens. Spirit, I believe you have taken me to a golden time in the best place on earth. There is only one man with a laugh like that. Which means this warehouse. I was apprenticed here. Ah, it's time. Yo ho ho, my boys. No more work tonight. It's Christmas Eve, Dick. Christmas, Ebenezer. Let's have the shutters up. Hilly ho. Fezziwig. Bless his heart. Fezziwig's alive again. Oh, yeah. He taught me everything he knew. There was no desk higher than his, and no man merrier than he. The happiness he gave was quite as great as if it had cost a fortune. Clear away, my lads. Let's have lots of room here. Hilly ho, Dick. Chirp, Ebenezer. Oh, you heard him, Scrooge. Cheer up. Let there be music. And why? Tonight, we shall be very merry indeed. A flowing feast of festivities in true Fezziwig style. Now, where has Mrs. Fezziwig got to? Ah, there she is. Ladies and gentlemen, may we have this dance. Electric boogaloo. It's from the future, but not twerking. Oh, now this is what I call a party. Will I join in? I'm definitely going to be coming back here. This was the highlight of every year. But there was one in particular when... Ebenezer, excuse me, 
You're Ebenezer Scrooge. I'm... Belle. It was good old Fezziwig who let our paths cross. <laughs> Everyone else here has a partner. I haven't got one. I also see you don't either. As it's Christmas, would you like to dance? We dance the night away. Far into the hours of Christmas Day. Hurrah! Well done, everyone. <laughs> oh, look at you both. Young and happy. Dancing around the tables. Oh, I didn't know you could smile. You're the heart and soul of this place. What happened to you? You were very content. For a time. I'd even asked her to take my hand in marriage. And speaking of which, there's another shadow you must see. For my time grows shorter here. No, spirit. Please, I, I do not wish to. Does this place ring any bells? You have replaced me with another idol. What idol? A golden one. My dear, this is the even-handed dealing of the world. Poverty and hardship are not an aspiration of mine. The measure of a man is his wealth. Oh, you fear the world too much, Ebenezer. This wretched business has changed you. How long must we continue before we are married? You treat it like one of your contracts. When you asked for my hand, we were both so content. But you are not the same Ebenezer who once loved me. I was a boy naive enough to have foolish dreams that would ensure we would end up poor like the rest of them outside these walls. You're a businessman. Tell me, does my love have any worth or value to you? Then if I mean so little and you will not see reason nor give me reason to stay. It is for the full heart and for the love of him that you once were that I release him, Ebenezer. Very well, my dear. If that is what you desire, then so be it. The memory of our past together will no doubt cause you pain, but for only a very, very brief time. And you will dismiss the recollection of it gladly, I'm sure. I will endeavor to do the same. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. Good afternoon, my dear. Why? Why do you continue to count the coin? You must follow her! What you've become. The life. You could have had. They're just some of the thoughts I can hear going through your head. Spirit, speak no more of this. Why do you delight in torturing me? These are fixed events that made you into the man you are today. We can't intervene or change the past. Only observe it. I told you, these are the shadows of the things that have been. And they are... What they are. Tell me, did she lead a fruitful life? I can see that she did in the end. One of happiness with a family of her own. Haunt me no longer, spirit. I demand you remove me from this place at once. I have seen enough on this night to last a lifetime. Ah, oh, since you've asked so nicely... I'll just... Leave me, damn you! Oh, my word. I'm home. Was it all a dream? Oh, please, no. It can't be. Perhaps a pest has intruded. 
Scrooge carefully made his way down the stairs, where light shone from the front room of the house, illuminating the hallway. As he entered, the room, once dark and cold, was blinding with light. The flames roared in the fireplace, and there stood a giant of a man holding a flaming torch. Scrooge! Come in! Come in and know me better, man. I won't. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. Oh, don't be shy. That's rude. That's it. Make yourself a home. Well, it is your home. But you know what I mean. Please, spirit, conduct me where you will. I've already been shown a lesson which I've learnt. Let me profit by yours. That's the spirit. Ha! Spirit. Get it? Because I'm a ghost. Anyway, if you'll touch my coat, we'll get started. Scrooge did what the bearded spirit asked. The spirit reduced to the size of his haunt as the surroundings dissolved around them, leaving them in the sun-dawn-drenched streets of Christmas morning. It's Christmas? No, it's Easter. Of course it's Christmas. Just look at them. One day a year, billions and billions of humans just stop. Laziness? Do they look lazy? No, look, they're happy. Celebrating, sharing, even loving. It's a day off from the grind of the world to spend it with those they love. If they can. If they can? Well, just look around you. In the areas you don't tend to look. And what do you see? Um, uh, people? Beggars? The poor. Exactly. They're not as well off as you are, no. But they are there. They don't have the comfort of homes or even a bed. But here they are, still celebrating Christmas the best they can. Some have lost friends, even others. But I suppose there's always the prisons and union workhouses for them. I didn't mean... Wait, Spirit, where are you going? Well, this isn't all there is to see, you know. Come on, Ebenezer. We've got somewhere to be. Where are we, Spirit? Take a look. Go on through the window. They can't see us. It's Bob Cratchit's house. That must be his wife and, and his children. They're having goose, but it's quite small. Small? Mm, maybe. But look how happy they are with it. Just because people can only afford small doesn't mean they are disappointed. It's Bob Cratchit. And who is he carrying? Shh, they're getting to that. Come on, let's get inside. We may be hidden from them, but not the cold. Upon Bob Cratchit's shoulder was a young boy, no older than seven years old. He wore an iron frame that supported his limbs, whilst his father held his little crutch in his other hand. Hello, my beautiful family. Yay! Our kid's not so tight. Let me put Tiny Tim down first. And how did little Tim behave? As good as gold and better. It told me, coming home, that he hoped the people saw him in the church because he was a cripple. And it might be pleasant to them to remember upon Christmas Day who made lame beggars walk and blind men see. Scrooge watched the child with admiration. He was such a small and weak child, but his heart and motivation were large and strong. He watched the Cratchit family enjoy their limited but appreciated meal. You could almost detect a slight smile 
upon his wrinkled lips. To Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. Founder of the feast, indeed. I wish I had him here. I'd turn his body into a little soup. My dear, the children, it's Christmas Day. Long life to him. A merry Christmas and a happy new year. He'll be very merry and happy, I'll have no doubt. Scrooge took the words, but did not feel anger. Instead, a sadness. His thoughts were interrupted by a small voice at the edge of the table. God bless us, everyone. Those words hit Scrooge hard. But his smile turned back to its regular frown as a thought crossed his mind. Spirit, tell me if Tiny Tim will live. I see a vacant seat in the poor chimney corner and a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. If these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. No, no. Oh no, kind spirit. See, see he will be spared. It doesn't work like that. But as you say, if he is to die, then he'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Scrooge was silent. He hung his head to hear his own words quoted by the spirit, and he was overcome with penitence and grief. Come on, one more stop to make. The Cratchits, the feast, the very walls around them began to change, taking the two travellers to a place that he knew well. It's my nephew Fred's house. My sister's place beforehand. Well, for being poor enough, they certainly seem very happy and content, don't they? Indeed. He's a comical old fellow. Not so pleasant as he might be. However, his offences carry their own punishment. And I have nothing to say about him. Are they talking about me? No, no. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of, you know, old, unpleasant men. His wealth is of no use to him. He does little with it. He doesn't make himself comfortable with it. He hasn't even the satisfaction of thinking, ha, 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 that he is ever going to benefit us with it. Ooh, ouch. Fred. I do feel sorry for him, though. I couldn't be angry with him if I tried. Who suffers by his ill whims? Himself, always. Here he takes it into his head to dislike us. But he won't come and dine with us. What's the consequence? He won't lose much for dinner. Then he'll lose some pleasant moments, which could do him no harm. I mean to give him the same chance every year, whether he likes it or not. For I pity him. He may rail at Christmas till he dies, but he can't help thinking better of it. I defy him. If he finds me going in there in good temper year after year and saying, Uncle Scrooge, how are you? It only puts him in the vein to leave his poor clerk 50 pounds. And that's something. And I think I shook him yesterday. Anyway, enough of all that. Let's play a game. Oh, Fred, I... I... I, I think I, it's best we leave. My time is running short. Are spirits' lives so short? My life upon this globe is very brief. It ends tonight. <sighs> I don't want to go. Once again, they found themselves on familiar streets and covered in thick mist and fog. Not another person to be heard. No cheer or merriment. Please, spirit. You've showed me so much, I... Spirit? Spirit? No. Please don't leave me. Spirit? 
Scrooge remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley as he looked up to find a wall of mist moving towards him. As the fog enveloped him, from within Scrooge witnessed a phantom silently approaching him. The figure had an aura of death about it. This spirit was draped and hooded in black, with an outstretched hand and a grey face that held sharp eyes with a burning stare. This tall, floating spirit towered over the cowering Scrooge, filling him with a solemn dread, and for the first time in his life, I believe he was chilled to the bone. <laughs> you look like you've just seen a ghost. Three. Three, in fact. Well, now you can add another to your list. All your Christmases have come at once, quite literally. I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come. I sense you have been expecting, yet fearing my arrival. I take it you are about to show me shadows of things that have not happened, but may happen. Is that so? I do come from the future. Many possible futures, in fact. And I see all outcomes. The one I will show you is where events are set in stone. If you do not learn the error of your ways, Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, ghost of the future. I admit I do fear you more than any specter I have seen this night. But as I know your purpose is to do me good, and I hope to live to be another man from what I was... I am prepared to bear your company, and do it with, with a thankful heart. Your heart has never been thankful, for it is colder still than these dark winter nights. It was too late for our intervention of your fiendish friend, Mr. Jacob Marley. But is it too late for yourself? Time will tell. Allow me to reveal what fate awaits you in Christmases to come, and determine the measure of your life. Very well. Lead on, spirit. The night is waning fast, and, and it is precious time to me. Lead on. We're already here. Look beyond the mist. Hark! The future is now. Scrooge followed in the shadow of the phantom's dress as different parts of the city in another time sprang up around them in an instant. How far into the future have we come? This all looks too similar from my time. There are lessons to be learnt here. Scrooge and the spirit stood together behind a gathering group of merchants that had congregated together all of them familiar to the old businessman. You know these people here? They're colleagues of yours. They've all traded in nefarious deeds with you in the past. Listen. <laughs> no, I'm afraid I don't know much about it either way. I only know he's dead. Old Scratch has got his own at last. When did he die? Last night, I believe snuffed out like a candle. Why? What was the matter with him? I believe I could speak for everyone here that we thought he'd never die. I thought he'd outlive us all. What has he done with his money? I haven't heard. Left it to his company, perhaps. All I know is that he hasn't left it to me. He had all that money with nothing and no one to spend it on. It's likely to be a cheap funeral, then. I will only pay my respects if lunch is provided. <laughs> <laughs> They're rotten friends to the gentleman that they speak of. I shall remove my acquaintance of them immediately upon my return. Have you considered, perhaps, that it was he who was rotten to war? Why are you showing me this? What importance could such trivial conversations hold, spirit? Must they have some hidden purpose? You shall see in time. 
Come, let me show you what a death at Christmas brings. So, this is the auction hall. Many a time I've been here to purchase commodities. Hang on a moment. Up at the stand there. That looks like my bed curtains and my fine towels and, and my shirts. Up next is lot number 42 from the Grand Estate, brought very kindly to us by Mrs. Dilber. That is mine, confounded cheek. I shall be docking her wages for this. Thank you, spirit, for showing my housekeeper's dishonesty. That is not why I have brought you here, and you know it. Sold for ten shillings to you, madam. Up next is lot 43, a marvellous collection of silver cutlery from the man you know who frightened away everyone in life, but to profit us in death. <laughs> spirit, I think I see now. The case of this unfortunate and unhappy man might be my own. My life tends that way now. You do not see fully yet. There is more you must know. Ah, oh, back at Bob Cratchit's house. I've come to this family world in a matter of hours. But there is something wrong here. It's quiet. Very quiet. Look upon your work and despair, Ebenezer Scrooge. Now, children, don't show weak eyes to your father. I'm sure he will be back soon. He's walked a little slower these last few nights. I've known him to walk very fast indeed, with tiny Tim upon his shoulder. But he was very light to carry. Robert! You went today, then? Yes, my dear. I wish you could have gone. It would have done you so good to see how green the place is, but you'll see it often on better days, I'm sure. I promised him that I would walk there every Sunday, my little, little child. <laughs> my, li <laughs> my little, little child. <laughs> Spirit. I dread there is an empty chair by the table and a crutch without an owner. I was foretold of this shadow. Please tell me Tiny Tim lived to see another Christmas. The Christmas of the past will be his last. These... these events can be undone. If I change, they will change. Tiny Tim... he will live. Yes? Please? That's for you to decide. The only outcome I cannot see. But here, you must face the consequences of your actions. I'm fine, I'm fine, children. Don't, don't worry about me. I'm very happy. I'm fantastic. <laughs> we will not forget him. Please, spirit. I know I am undeniably responsible for this, but I, I cannot bear to see any more. Then see no more. Ah! Spirit, this is a fearful place. Why have you taken me to the graveyard? Please, maybe leave. I promise I shall not leave its lesson. I have learnt enough. Far from it, Ebenezer Scrooge. There's much you can still learn. I promise to be a good man, spirit. You, you must believe me. Do you recognize any of the names? There are many of those here that you had business with. They know you're here too. I can hear them, screaming in pain and anger. For each contract you sign, it's a death warrant to the less fortunate you knew none could afford. They paid with their lives instead. 
If I had known this was the result of my work, I'd have... You'd have done what? Please do tell. We're all ears. Forgive me. Hear me, spirit. I am not the man I was. Do you see this tomb here? Yes. It is much smaller than the rest. The others are covered with flowers and trinkets. But this one... with weeds. It is neither tended nor cared for. Come before me and see thee. Before I approach that stone to which you point, answer me one question. Are these the shadows of the things that will be, or are they shadows of things that may be only? Well? That is your path to choose. <laughs> oh, spirit, I'm, I have not the power to see what you are about to show me. Do as you are told! Draw nearer and read who lies beneath this earth. Men's courses will foreshadow certain ends. But if the courses be departed from, the ends will change. Scrooge reluctantly crept towards the neglected stone, trembling as he went. His finger followed the letters of his own name, carving the snow out of the inscription. Here lies Ebenezer Scrooge. Avert your eyes if you must, but this is and has always been what you've most feared. No, no, Spirit. Oh, no, no. Say it can't be. Am I a condemned man? Why show me this if I am past all hope? Scrooge was now faced with his destiny, realized his own mortality as he cried out in terror. He clutched at the phantom's cloak as if begging forgiveness. I go on a Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons they teach. I will find a place for all in my heart. I can and will change these shadows you have shown me. Oh, tell me I may sponge away the writing on the stone. My work here is done. <laughs> Farewell, Ebenezer Scrooge. You will not leave me in this place. Spirit, no. Take me away. Take me away. Send me home and let me live a life of atonement. Ah. Uh. I'm back. They sent me home. I... I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. Oh, Jacob Marley, heaven and the Christmas time be praised for this. The spirit of Christmas is now within my possession. I say it on my knees, oh, Jacob. Wait a minute. It is morning outside, but I don't know what day of the month it is or how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. <laughs> ah, you boy. What's today? Eh? You what? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? My Christmas Day, of course. It's Christmas Day! Oh, I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Hello, my fine fellow. Do you know the poulterers in the next street? Do you know whether they have sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize, the big one. What? The one as big as me? What a delightful boy. That's the one. Go and buy it and tell them to bring it here. Come back and I'll give you a shilling. Nope. Come back in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. 
I shall send it to Bob Cratchit's. He shan't know who sends it. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. As promised, the turkey was delivered to Bob's and the family ate well that night for the first time. Scrooge, with a new lease of life and a spring in his step, dressed himself in his best and walked through the merry streets of London wishing everyone a very merry Christmas to all he passed. Many could not believe their eyes nor their ears. Was this the same man who only yesterday humbugged at the very mention of the festive season? Merry Christmas to you, and to you, madam, and to you, sir. A Merry Christmas to all! <laughs> Scrooge spotted the charitable gentleman from the day before, who he had so cruelly sent out into the cold with no charity. Ah, gentlemen! Mrs. Scrooge, I was rather harsh yesterday. Forgive me. Allow me to ask your pardon, and you will have goodness. Scrooge whispered into the man's ear an immeasurably generous offer. Lord bless me, my dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? And not a farthing less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Come see me tomorrow. A very Merry Christmas to you, sir. Scrooge left the gentleman in disbelief of his newfound kindness. Scrooge continued to wander the streets, eventually arriving at the desired destination. Uncle. Uncle, this is the most unexpected pleasure. What brings you here? Well, I... I've come to dinner at your invitation, remember? Will you let me in, Fred? Of course. We're delighted to have you. The more the merrier, that's what I say. Scrooge was home in five minutes. Nothing could be heartier. Everyone looked the same as they did when Scrooge arrived with the spirit. They were merry all day and night having a wonderful party with wonderful games, wonderful unanimity, and wonderful happiness. It had been so long. Scrooge had forgotten all the fun that Christmas had, and it was the first time in a long time that another living soul had heard him laugh. The next morning, Scrooge was early at the office. It must be nearly time now. I thought if I could get here first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late. <laughs> I'm, I'm very sorry, sir. I... What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? My apologies, sir. It's only, it's only once a year, though, sir. It shall not be repeated, I promise. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir, if, if, if you know what I mean. Come here, Bob. Now, I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm not going to stand for this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, I am about to raise your salary. Excuse me, sir. Merry Christmas, Bob. A merrier Christmas than I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family in any way I can. Oh, fantastic. Thank you very much, sir. I am blessed. We can discuss your affairs this very afternoon over a Christmas lunch. A small thanks for your service. Now add several shovels of coal to the fire. I don't want my best clerk to catch his death. <laughs> Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old place in the good old world. 
Some people laughed to see the alteration in him. But he let them laugh and little heeded them. For he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this globe for good at which some people did not have their fill of laughter in the outset. And knowing that such as these would be blind anyway, he thought it quite as well that they should wrinkle up their eyes and grins as have the malady in less attractive forms. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with the spirits, but lived upon the total abstinence principle ever afterwards. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us and all of us. He celebrated each like it was his last. <laughs> and I still miss him. That is a story like one I've never heard before. Father, I didn't realize you... Oh, would you look at that? Christmas Day is fast approaching. It'll be on us within the hour. <laughs> and you stayed after all to indulge in an old man's story. Pass me my crutch, will you please? Now, I should probably think you'll be returning to your family now. Yes. I must get back before they awake. But perhaps I shall share this tale of old Ebenezer Scrooge with them, to remind them of the true spirit of Christmas, and to always keep it with them in their hearts. Thank you, Father. Tim. Good night. Um, William? Yes, Father? Merry Christmas, my boy. Merry Christmas. <laughs> God bless us. Yes. God bless us, everyone.